the new six pinpoint weather team presents hurricane season 2016 getting results and the fact is we have not seen the biggest storm that is going to hit florida and we don't know when that one is going to come Hurricane season is here, but the key to getting ready and getting results isn't being scared. It is being prepared. Right now, Tropical Storm Colin is moving closer to making landfall. But for Central Florida so far, it has meant a day of rain and a lot of it. A different story on the Gulf Coast where we've seen wind and waves and street flooding. As Colin is a relatively small storm, there is relative rea in reality, though, we're talking about three million Floridians who have never faced a hurricane. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of News 6 at 7. I'm Ginger Gadsden in the Pinpoint Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. This hour, our News 6 team brings you an in-depth look at how to get results this hurricane season. Julie. I'm meteorologist Julie Broughton in our special News 6 phone bank and since 6 o'clock this morning, experts here have been on hand taking your calls and answering your questions on insurance, your yard, generators, anything you need to know. The number to call is on your screen, 1-888-436-6665. Ginger. Julie, thank you. And in moments, we will take you to the Big Bend area of Florida. Meteorologist Candace Campos is there near where Tropical Storm Colin is expected to move ashore. If you don't like roller coasters, flying through hurricanes probably isn't for you. Later this hour, we'll not only talk to the men and women who fly into hurricanes on purpose, we'll show how new technology is making prediction of storms more accurate each and every year. You know, we've been planning this special for months, mm -hmm. and we had no way of knowing that even as we speak, Tropical Storm Colin would be on its way. So let's get started right there. This is what the storm system looks like right now. The visible satellite will be fading within the hour, but it's beautifully done. You can pick out exactly and pinpoint the center of rotation right there. Last report from the Hurricane Center said this thing was about 100 miles off the shore of Apalachicola. That was about 5 o'clock this afternoon. Since then, the eye is inched closer and closer and closer. When I say inched, it's actually sped up. It's moving to the northeast at a pretty rapid rate. It won't matter, though. No matter where this eye or this center of rotation it's not much of an eye. Wherever the circulation goes ashore, it's kind of eh, hit or miss for us because the big damage that we're getting, the big rain, the heavy pounding rain, the wind, the tornado warnings that we have already had are already here. That all separated away from the center of this storm more than 24 hours ago. It started surging its way up the Florida Peninsula. As of 5 o'clock tonight, the wind speeds were 50 miles per hour. This forward movement north northeast at 23 will continue through the night tonight and this path to projected movement is going to be all good by tomorrow morning. During the overnight it advances all the way north of Jacksonville into Georgia and by tomorrow morning into the afternoon it will be well out there way off the coast of the Carolinas. In behind it, it brought us a really rough first wave of action. See this band of precipitation with all the lightning strikes? That's the band that produced the roughest weather produced one tornado warning for Alachua County, a second tornado warning for Flagler County, and tonight we're watching that push offshore. Once that one's gone and it's already off the coast, things kind of improve for us. Rainfall rate coming down right now in Bavard County, 81 hundredths of an inch per hour is one of the heaviest. Now there's more rain to come, but notice the lack of lightning. Not as much convection going on now that that first punch is done. So for now, things are looking a whole lot better. I'm not sounding the all clear on rain, but I believe our tornado risk is starting to take a dive as the wind profiles are starting to look a lot more uniform into the night tonight. Future radar here will continue to show you just how much more rain we have the potential to have, though. This is a great time to remind you to download our free hurricane tracker app. We're constantly updating it with any projected pass along with our one touch radar. Just go to your app store and search WKMG. Right now we want to check out Candace, Candace Campos, who's coming to us live from Cedar Key. Candace, it looks a lot more windy where you are than where I'm standing tonight. 
<laughs> it is certainly very windy out here along the Gulf Coast, but it is a big comparison compared to about three o'clock this afternoon. If you can zoom in right here, my photographer Jeff Seegers, right here is where the water line was about three o'clock, and that's all thanks to Tropical Storm Colin as well as high tide about three o'clock. We shot some video earlier today when we actually arrived out here in Cedar Key. It was a mess. You again, we had flooding. We had the, the white caps. It was all out there. We even had to go through police barricades to even talk to them and get our way into Cedar Key because they were blocking off the entire key just to residents and business owners. And back out here, again, what a difference a couple hours makes because now we can actually see the road all thanks to the low tide. And that is going to be one positive thing for folks out here on the Gulf Coast is the arrival of Tropical Storm Colin is expected during low tide. And that is the way you want a tropical storm to come in. But you can see we are now starting to see a few breaks from those rain bands, but the wind that is certainly sticking around and we are going to be sticking around throughout the next couple of hours as we wait for the approach of Tropical Storm Colin out here on the Gulf Coast. Guys. All right, enjoy that lull in activity while you have it. Candace Campos reporting live for us this evening. Thank you, Candace. Marion County has been seeing more of the strongest storms from Collins so far. News 6 was there as the Emergency Operations Center opened up. They are working to get results and get you through the storm. We also spotted people in the Ocala area stocking up on sandbags and supplies to brace for Collins. While all of central Florida is at risk, the biggest danger is to our coast, 138 miles of it from Brevard to Volusia and Flagler counties. So even though Colin moved north, people there are getting prepared. We have team coverage. James Barvero shows us how Brevard County is faring in moments. But we start with News 6 reporter Lauren Korn in Volusia County. And Lauren, what's it like now on Ormond Beach? Well, right now, uh, the rain has died down. We'll take a pan over here while the rain has died down. The wind is still pretty heavy. You see a couple of surfers out there brave to be out there this evening, but folks inland and on the water spent the whole day preparing for the worst. As tropical storm Colin gets closer, Volusia County residents buckle down to prepare for the worst. And it can happen. Folks in Deltona spent the morning loading up sandbags into their cars. I don't want my property flood now. While Beach Safety Patrol actively monitored the water, ready to bring in their equipment and the possibility of closing the beach. And depending on the storm system and where it goes, we could possibly put the double red flag up, which means no swimming. Sure, she's all right. Boaters are also preparing for high winds and a lot of rain. Everyone's hunkered down pretty much, and all everyone on my dock's already taken care of. They've been starting since this morning. Captain Scott Marcy says he and some other boaters plan to stay put at the Halifax Marina, securing their boats and riding out the storm. Just put some more lines out, dock lines, make sure they're secure, and throw another couple more fenders out. You know, batting down the hatches, of course. You know, it doesn't really matter what you're in. You know, just hope that it passes through and, you know, everyone stays safe. Now, as of right now, Beach Safety Patrol says that they have the yellow flag up, but we'll be soon switching to the red flag for these uh, dangerous, hazardous beach conditions. And they tell me that they'll continue to fly that red flag throughout the week. Back to you. Lauren Korn reporting live for us tonight. Thank you, Lauren. James Barbero is in Brevard County tonight. James, how is it looking on Cocoa Beach? Well, it's 10 minutes after 7, ladies, and at this time we thought we're the only we thought we were the only people left at the beach, but look in the distance. If you can see, there's a man running into the water right now, and then further than that, there's six who appear to be teenagers who just got into the water. This as the rain comes down heavier, this as the water gets rougher, Ocean Rescue telling us they had to pull four or five people from the water today. Dozens of people, some of them who we caught up with, they're here on vacation, so a little bad weather did not discourage them from enjoying themselves. Take a listen. Yeah, we're on vacation, so we wanted to come and see the beach, and so we just <laughs> decided we'd uh, give it a shot. There's a red flag on the beach right now advising that only the strongest swimmers go in the water. Okay. Do you feel that you're one of the stronger ones? Yeah, I think I would survive. That. Yeah, I'd be all right. And in response to that, Ocean Rescue tells us that they are keeping swimmers in the water only about waist deep. That way they can stay protected and they don't have risk of being sucked out to sea with rip currents. Take a listen also to what Ocean Rescue told us earlier tonight. 
The next couple of days are going to be uh, persisting in the same way. Um, obviously with the weather, you want to watch out for the lightning and the thunder, uh, check with the lifeguards. We are going to have the same conditions of two to three foot, with the strong lateral currents and most likely the addition of rip currents. And if you thought that video of a man parasailing was incredible, look at what we're looking at right now live at the Cocoa Beach Pier. In the distance, there's a gentleman in the water, and then not far from him, there are six who appear to be teenagers in the water as well. People coming out here and braving the water as it gets rougher, as the rain comes down harder. Ladies, Ocean Rescue, again, they had to rescue four or five people, they tell us, from the waters here today in Brevard County. Fortunately, no one suffered any life-threatening injuries. Single red flags on the beaches earlier today. Expect single red flags again at the beaches tomorrow. Live in Cocoa Beach, I'm James Sparvero, News 6. James, thank you. Just not a good idea for those folks to be out there, though. Governor Rick Scott has declared a state of emergency ahead of Tropical Storm Colin. June 1st, he talked about plans for a new statewide alert system and how we can be ready for whatever happens. We are thankful that we've had 10 years uh, without a hurricane, so we should knock on as much wood as we can find. And we just hope it doesn't happen this year. <laughs> so uh, now we also know the best time to prepare for a hurricane is before it hits. Um, Preparing for the hurricane season has to be a priority for every Florida family. The governor says the state has invested more than $3 million to improve hurricane evacuation shelters and is spending $3 million more to develop a statewide alert system. Meantime, the National Hurricane Center has a new forecasting tool to help you know when to evacuate and when to stay put. It's really going to change the game in being able to show people where the storm surge could occur. Coming up in minutes, the director of the National Hurricane Center shows Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells how new color-coded maps will tell you at a glance about the risk to your neighborhood. But right now, Tom is pinpointing Tropical Storm Colin. Take a look over my shoulder what's happening right now, Ginger. You see all the activity that pushed through earlier. A bunch of it has pushed out to the east. I'll talk about that and have a look ahead to the rain chances for tonight and the threat for more heavy rain for tomorrow. Julie. Remember, our phone lines are open. Experts are here right now taking your calls and answering your questions on how to prepare for hurricane season. The number to call is right there on your screen, 1-888-436-6665. Again, that is 1-888-436-6665. Madeline. Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Madeline Evans. As we know, hurricane season did start June 1st. And NOAA has come out with their predictions for the amount of hurricanes for this time of year. We're gonna be about near normal. Our name storms about 10 to 16. Now we did have two name storms already. It was Alex back in January and Bonnie in May. And then our hurricanes about four to eight. And then our major hurricanes one to four. Weather in we continue pinpointing Tropical Storm Colin. The latest projection shows it making landfall coming up sometime in the next two hours. I will take an in-depth look in minutes. When it comes to hurricane coverage, it's the wind that gets all the attention. But experts know it's the water that forms the storm surge and flooding that causes more damage and takes more lives. Because of that, forecasters at the National Hurricane Center have developed new potential storm surge flooding maps. They're entirely separate from the wind warnings we're using and then what we're used to seeing. But the director of the National Hurricane Center, Rick Nab, told me they're just as important. In 2012, Superstorm Sandy came ashore in the Northeast with hurricane force winds. But it was the storm surge that created an estimated $75 billion in property damage. Many in its path were caught off guard. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Now the National Hurricane Center hopes new storm surge forecasting and color-coded maps will raise awareness this hurricane season. It's really going to change the game in being able to show people where the storm surge could occur because exactly what storm surge you get in your community is dependent on so many details. Details that researchers have been ironing out for some time. We've gone through a, a long and careful process to design the graphic all the way down to the colors and the labeling. We've gone through exercises with our emergency management partners on how they would use it for decision making. This example shows the potential storm surge threat to Fort Myers and Sanibel Island. Red indicates where forecasters believe there will be more than nine feet of water. Gold, more than six feet. Yellow, more than three. And blue, up to three feet. So if a storm threatens central Florida, News 6 will be able to show you 
a similar forecast. I think folks will really be able to see where the risk is and be able to see that they need to evacuate to get out of the way of this storm surge. And forecasters hope this new visual cue will be enough to get people out of harm's way. You pick out your community on the map, that's what to prepare for. And if you're told to evacuate, you go. We'll be seeing maps like that this hurricane season, but they won't be completely operational until 2017. But it's important to remember, important to all of us, if you'll note, the storm surge threat is not just along the coast. Water can and will rush inland for several miles. It's time to take a look at the forecast tonight. We're going to start out with a visible satellite image. It's one of my favorite shots. If you watch us much, you'll know that I love to use the visible satellite. It really gives you a good grip on what's going on with all the convection. You see the ridges here beginning to pop right out of the top of these clouds. It looks rough and edgy, like it needs to be sandpapered down. Those are the big, heavy convective thunderstorms that just erupted in the last several hours. Center of rotation is about right there, trying to work its way to the northeast at a very rapid clip to make landfall as we go through the next couple of hours. Visible satellite will be fading, so we'll wave bye bye to it for now. Next time around, I don't think I'll have the visible. We'll have to go all infrared for the rest of the evening. Here's the 5 o'clock advisory. I'm waiting for the 8 p.m. update. I don't expect it to change much. The maximum sustained wind, 50 miles per hour. The forward progress, well, that's impressive. And it has sped up during the day today. Now moving north-northeast at 23. Earlier today, it was a 12 mile per hour, then a 15, then a 17. Now the forward progress is being picked up by the river of air and forced to the north-northeast really rapidly. So rapidly, in fact, that by tomorrow morning during the overnight, 2 a.m., it's going to be north of Jacksonville. Then tomorrow afternoon, way out here off of Cape Hatteras, will no longer be a player in your forecast. Wind speeds have really calmed down across the interior. Nine mile per hour wind in Ocala, 20 in Leesburg, 22 out there at the Cape, and a 21 mile per hour wind right now in New Smyrna Beach. Now that this first slap of precipitation has pushed on through with the heavy convection, I really think our Tornado chances are starting to slow down, but we have to be vigilant. We still have a situation with the low in the Gulf of Mexico, and anytime we have a low out there, our chances of seeing a tornado do increase. Lightning strikes beginning to peel away from the I-95 corridor. Plenty more rain to come where that stuff has been rolling in from, and so as I widen the view out, just know this moisture plume still has to come on through, and on future radar, you'll see from Tampa to Sarasota, the next band will come marching in here during the next several hours. Set up for local impacts, wind gusts to 50 miles per hour. Much of that's going to be over on the Gulf Coast. I don't see that happening for most of you. Water vapor shows you the drier air that's going to force its way into the northern part of the state for us during the next 24 hours. By 2 a.m. tonight, this is what the rain looks like. Still raining, just not the foot stomping rain we've had earlier. And tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., we start to improve just like that. Rapidly, as the day wears on, we do dry out. There will be scattered showers for you during the morning rush hour, but most of the day tomorrow will be a vast improvement over what we've had today. Let's go ahead and talk about overnight lows tonight in the 70s everywhere. I'm going to go with an overnight low tonight of 75 degrees right here in the city. Beautiful for tomorrow. We're going to be talking about a daytime high that bounces back just shy of 90. The daytime high tomorrow is 89. Stormy in the morning, the nicer for your afternoon. The next three days, 89 is the daytime high tomorrow. Wednesday, 92. Come Thursday, the high is 91. And note that my rain chances are way down, Ginger. Tomorrow's, well, tonight, actually. And then tomorrow yeah. are the wet ones. We'll go back to being, you know, normal rain for the rest and of this week. We will take normal compared to what we're seeing today. I certainly would. But, you know, I, I would call this a dry run. Yeah. So it's not dry. Let's call this a wet run to get us in gear sure get folks used to you know but attention. i love that storm surge map where you can just look at the colors and see awesome. what's happening it's yeah i amazing. can't wait for it's that it's a game changer yeah it really is all right thank you tom right. now keep up with colin on the go with our free hurricane tracker app find up to the minute projected paths forecast along with one touch radar just search wkmg in your app store julie Hey, Ginger, we are over here in our special new six phone bank. We have an entire team of experts here taking your phone calls and answering your questions. Now, if you do have a question, the number is right there on your screen, 888-436-6665. And I'm joined now by Andrew Moser of Collis Roofing, and he is a certified home improvement estimator. That's a mouthful, so that's some important work there. Now, what should folks be doing to be prepared? 
Uh, you know, take a good look at your house. Uh, mm -hmm. Take a walk around before the storm gets here. Uh, if you're missing any shingles, uh, look at your windows. Make sure all the sealant around the edges is in place and uh, doesn't have any cracking in it. Uh, once the winds do pick up, uh, you know, if, if you are missing any shingles already, uh, you are going to get water into the building. Uh, and that's pretty much the two main entrance uh, mm -hmm. points for the water uh, in wind-driven rain is going to be the roof and the windows. Okay. Are you guys getting a lot of calls at your office about folks concerned about hurricane season? Uh, not as much concerned as they're already uh, calling about the leaks and you okay. got to address them now before uh, the real storms get here. Okay. And what should I do if I notice that there's a leak or if I think I have a leak? Uh, the first thing you could do is uh, call a, call your you know local contractor. Uh, you can give Call us a call. We'd be more than happy to come out and give you a free evaluation on the roof. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. No and of course, lots of experts here. Now we have another expert joining us now. This is Mr. Harvey Cohn, and you're here giving legal advice. So what is the best way for folks to be prepared from an attorney standpoint? I think the most important thing everyone should know when they're preparing for a hurricane season is to check your insurance policy and make sure you know exactly what's in your insurance policy. Yeah. For example, there are different deductibles. There are 2%, 3%, even as high as 10% of your home's value for the deductible for the hurricanes. Right, and you want to know what you're dealing with before you're right. dealing with a lot of damage, right? Yes, ma'am, and you need to look and make sure that, that you have the proper coverage, including water coverage, mold. You need to make sure you have mold coverage in your policy, and you need to know exactly what's in your policy. That's the very most important thing that I could think of. All right. Thank you so much. Some right. great advice. And again, if you have a question, all questions are welcome here. The number to call is right there on your screen, 888-436-6665. All right, Julie, thank you. Well, there's an interactive way for you to learn how to strengthen your home ahead of a storm. Our weather experts have created a custom storm just for you. In just two minutes, Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells takes us to Epcot, where guests get a fun hands-on lesson that doesn't feel like a lecture. Well, as we devote a special hour to getting ready for hurricane season, Tropical Storm Colin is already causing flooding as it makes its way toward landfall in the Big Bend area. And Tom Collin is a, sm a relatively small storm, and its center moved over north of our area. But another storm is inevitable at some point during hurricane season, so people don't seem to understand what that means. That's exactly right. That's why Disney's Epcot Center lets guests see, hear, and feel what a major storm is like. I recently got a chance to tour this special exhibit. Good morning, everyone. Are you ready to be Stormstruck? Entertainment and education collide. Ready? At Stormstruck. Set? A tale of two homes. Go! It's fun, it's interactive, it's high energy, and families just love it. It's a timed race. Located at Disney's Epcot Center. Yeah, it's about strengthening your home and safeguarding your family. The interactive exhibit sponsored by Flash. The Federal Alliance for Safe Homes. This is an excellent example of exactly is a way to educate homeowners on the importance of storm-ready construction. Connecting the rafters and trusses to the walls. You're not only educating people, but you're entertaining them at the same time. They are storm-ready. And therefore, they retain that learning much better than they would if you just set them down and lectured to them. It all starts at the Severe Weather Replicator Theater. Our weather experts have created a custom storm just for you where they witness in 4D what a storm can do. Wow, that storm's moving in quickly. The home is destroyed, and then it's rebuilt by the audience. And so then they're told how it'll weather, and the storm is run again. And you'll see the improvement in how the house performs. But give yourselves a big round of applause for a job. Well done. That's the mess. First goes the garage door. Know your risk. So that's not a good, uh, not a good outcome. Not a good day. Yeah. Understand property protection take action. Go back to your home, actually do something to strengthen your home Exit to the and right. prevent those high winds and waters from affecting you and your family in a negative way. Have a magical day. Thank you all. Oh yeah, mitigate, wow. mitigate, mitigate, fix it, fix it, <laughs> yeah. fix it. Okay, you don't have to go to Epcot to take advantage of all that Flash has to offer, Ginger. Their website will help your whole family prepare for storms. Such a cool idea. Now we've included a link on clickorlando.com for you to check out. So when Hurricane Charlie hit, it devastated a crucial lifeline. We're talking about our electrical grid. Often we know about the outage before the customer. In minutes, how new technology can help power companies get the lights back on hours or even days faster. 
And as we go to break, here is another live look at Cedar Key, near where the heart of Tropical Storm Colin is moving ashore. Meteorologist Candace Campos will join us live from there when we come back. Your news. The New 6 Pinpoint Weather Team presents Hurricane Season 2016, getting results. Right now, Tropical Storm Colin is moving closer to making landfall. We are pinpointing its path and how much rain you can expect where you live. And you are looking live at the Big Bend area of Florida near where Tropical Storm Colin is expected to move ashore. Meteorologist Candace Campos will join us from there live in just minutes. And experts are here to answer your questions about your roof, your yard generators, anything you need to ask about hurricane preparations. The number to call 1-888-436-6665. Six, five. Welcome back to a special extended edition of News 6 at 7. I'm Ginger Gadsden. I'm meteorologist Julie Broughton, and we are here with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. All right, Julie and Ginger, we've been planning this special coverage for like months now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Showing people how storm preps and forecasting have improved since the days of Charlie, Francis, and even Wilma. Now we have Tropical Storm Colin to talk about. But we have to start with Colin. So let's get to it. Show you what's going on tonight with this situation. Now, what you're seeing right here is a satellite and radar together. I like this one a lot because my visible satellite is going kaput. The sun is setting so low that now I don't have access to it. But watch what happens. You see the way the center of rotation is about right here, racing to the northeast now. This thing will make landfall and basically not change the game for us at all. It's going to move quickly across the top part of the state, dragging all that initial line of precip with it. We still have more moisture to get through. This big moisture plume extends all the way down south here, well south of Miami, out into the Gulf of Mexico that we have to put up with the rain. But I think the big damage, the big danger from all the rotation, cross your fingers, seems to have slowed down. We had one warning in Alachua County, one in Flagler County for tornadoes, but neither one of them touched down. And so for now, we're looking a whole lot better. Wind speeds with this system 50 miles per hour. Here's the path to projected movement racing across the top part of our state into the Atlantic during the overnight and tomorrow. I'll be right back. We'll do a radar tour in a few more minutes and a full forecast this half hour to give you an idea of how long these impacts are going to stick around. Back to you. Tom, thank you. Colin appears to be nearing shore in the Big Bend area. Meteorologist Candace Campos is live in Cedar Key and Candace. Things are looking a little windy out there for you. Well, and that is the big change compared to about four o'clock or so. Right now, as you look out there over the Gulf of Mexico, Tropical Storm Colin is out there just under about 100 miles to our south southwest as it continues to approach the Big Bend area. But something we weren't looking at earlier today, earlier this afternoon and now to at this hour are those white caps. You can really feel the winds really starting to pick up. All good indication again that Colin is getting a little bit closer each hour or so. And then now the next concern that locals here are sigh of relief pretty much is when it comes to the actual storm surge. We had high tide at about three o'clock and now low tide will continue about 10 o'clock. So the good news here for locals up and down the Gulf Coast is that low tide thankfully will be combined with the arrival of Colin. So the worst thing you want to hear is when high tide and now storm surge, and that's what they were dealing with earlier today. They had homes nearly in, in, in water. We had residents here also shoveling water out of their homes, and now it looks like it will be more of a wind and rain event throughout the next few hours. And again, we'll be bringing you live pictures throughout the evening hours and here, News 6 at 11, giving you the up to the minute information on as Tropical Storm makes its way right here in the Gulf Coast. Guys. All right, Candace, thank you. Stay safe out there. Yeah, this is a great time to remind you to download our free Hurricane Tracker app. We are constantly updating the projected paths along with One Touch Radar. All you have to do to find it is search WKMG in your app store. Well, here is a live look at downtown Orlando where tens of thousands of soccer fans are showing up rain or in this case, more rain. <laughs> Here's what it looked like at Camping World Stadium a short time ago. Panama and Bolivia were set to kick off in tonight's Copa America match about 30 minutes ago. 
In the Tampa area, Colin has already caused some flooding. You can see here one guy thought it was a good idea to take his kayak out on the streets. That is on Clearwater Beach. Even semi trucks struggle to make it through all that water. The Tampa Bay area was expecting up to seven inches of rain last night. And it has been more than a decade since the last hurricane hit Florida. Three million people have moved here since Wilma. And as meteorologist Troy Bridges found out, that has some emergency workers in the state working to make sure everyone takes the storm season seriously. Canada, the fact is, we have not seen the biggest storm that is going to hit Florida, and we don't know when that one is going to come. Brian Kuhn's job is to make sure Florida and Floridians are ready. I recently asked Kuhn about the challenges the state faces, including complacency, nearly a dozen years since Hurricane Charlie. What do you say to the people who, there are two sets, the people who've been through it and don't think it's going to happen again, and then the people who are afraid because they've moved to town and never experienced it? Sure. First, I don't want people to be afraid. You know, we know that in Florida we're going to have severe weather, we're going to have hurricanes. The fact is, however, uh, we can deal with those. It just takes a little bit of proactive work to do everything you need to get ready for them. We saw gridlock in 2004 and 2005 as people tried to flee, but despite our booming population, Kuhn says evacuation should go smoother now. Well, the good news is that as the population in the state grows, the road network grows, and so we continue to evaluate where people are going to go. We've improved our technology to help uh, where people need to go. We, we've better defined our evacuation zone. So every year the Hurricane Center does a better job of telling us what that track looks like. And so uh, we won't have, as in the past, uh, such a wide area that needs to be evacuated. All right, well, when you need to stock up for a storm, you hit the supermarket, right? But have you ever wondered how supermarkets stock up? Danny Trainer shows us how aisles and aisles of extra supplies appear right when you need them. Well, this is fairly impressive. Uh, there's a lot of water here. Bill Pelham is warehouse operations manager for Publix. How quickly can you grab this and put it on a truck and get it to the store? Uh, we could do that in a number of hours. That's crucial because before you can bring bottles of water home, Bill's team has to send pallets of stuff to their stores, and they keep weeks worth of water ready anytime. But for storm season, we plan we'll fill this warehouse up uh, with water. Uh, that could be depleted uh, in a moment's notice if the right storm came along. Because no matter how good your plan, storms like to throw you a curveball. And you know, being in the weather business, you, you, you think you know what's coming, and maybe at the last minute there's a turn. Now, how quickly could you get additional water if you needed it? Oh, that could be within hours. To do that, a parade of forklifts and trucks is constantly on the move. Up and down each aisle, picking up pallets of products, then dropping them off in just the right place to be loaded onto the right semi-truck. And it's not all automated. Sometimes pickers have to just grab the goods by hand, one at a time. That's a physical job. It, it is. Jeff Day's team packs all of the orders up, then trucks them out. We can receive an order in the morning, have that processed, selected, and delivered early in the afternoon. But when storm force winds pick up, it's safety first. We want to make sure that by the time the sustained winds hit 40 miles an hour, that we are off the roads. Hey, I tell you, 2004, 2005 was like the, the ultimate stress test. Dwayne Stevens lived through those storms. I tell you, the central Florida was hit like a bowling alley, and it had us all on pins and needles, and we learned a lot. One of the lessons learned from the hurricanes of 2004 and 2005, generators. All Publix in the state of Florida and many other grocery stores also have these generators so they can serve us better. And after the storm strikes? Post-storm is as important or maybe more important than pre-storm for us to make sure those stores stay in stock. There may be some uh, power outages, there may be some boil water notices because of some um, utility problems, and we get um, unpredictable requests, so we have to be very flexible. So Publix is in constant contact with emergency leaders. Whether there's debris or whether there's disruption, whether there's road closures, to make sure that we are operating and moving our associates around in the in best. In a safe way and in a productive way. Absolutely. Now the next time a storm threatens, you'll know all the work that goes into making aisles and aisles of extra supplies suddenly appear at your supermarket. But it really all comes back to, to what you see here, uh, water. We have to make sure we have enough water, uh, ice on hand to make sure we can get that out to our stores uh, for the customers. 
All right, good to know. Yeah. And you always wonder how those things magically appear right, when you so need fast. it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people working to make it happen. Well, did you know that there are men and women who fly into storms like Colin on purpose? It is not a job for the faint of heart. If you don't like roller coasters, flying through hurricanes probably isn't for you. Meet the hurricane hunters and see how their new drone technology is making predicting storms more accurate every year. And you still have time to ask our experts about getting ready for hurricane season. The number to call there is on your screen, 888-436-6665. Madeline. Florida hasn't been hit by a hurricane since 2005. That was Hurricane Wilma. We've had 66 hurricanes form since then. And that's twice the previous record set. Well, we know much of what we know about Colin because of the hurricane hunters. New 6 meteorologist Candace Campos asked them why they signed up to fly into the heart of dangerous storms. It's not a job for the faint of heart. If you don't like roller coasters, flying through hurricanes probably isn't for you. Bumpy ride. Which means keeping your breakfast down while flying into the eye of a hurricane. You gotta have strong stomach, strong minds to fly on the NOAA G4. Lieutenant Commander Jason Mansour pilots the Gulfstream G4. Nicknamed Gonzo. It's one of three of the Hurricane Hunter aircrafts. Every hurricane has its personality. If you have a Category 1 hurricane that uh, you think is, is small and not very strong, but it, it's intensifying, it's hungry. So it give you a lot of bumps. Or a Category 5, and you're thinking, hey, that's a severe hurricane. It's a relatively smooth flight because it stabilized. It's not, it's not uh, getting hungrier or getting stronger. From the moment you squeeze into the G4, you'll notice everything is built in or bolted down for some seriously bumpy rides. Five point strap for sure, very, very robust. Just ask flight director meteorologist Ian Sears. I'm sitting there riding, trying to get my messages together, ready to send to the hurricane center. And uh, I'm not really focused on what's about to come at us. And next thing you know, the G-force is pushing me down so hard and I have a metal desk. I came about that far from eating my metal desk. When a storm threatens and warnings are in place, hunters fly into the storm at least twice a day, collecting data for up to eight hours at a time. We say what's actually happening at this time, real world, this is what's happening, that has a great impact positively on the hurricane model. Their tools include a Doppler radar on the tail and drop sons, which are lightweight tubes that free fall strategically through the storm. Well, this tells the hurricane model uh, from our G4 and NOAA's P3 aircraft what information it needs about what's happening with the hurricane environment. Uh, things like wind speed, wind uh, direction, temperature, humidity, dew point. During an average flight, about 30 drop sons are released. Each one costs about $700. It sounds like a lot, but you're talking about someone's life and property. So it's, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. And not to mention, they bring much improved forecasts days ahead of landfall. And the big scheme of things is to improve our intensity forecast, improve track forecast, so that we can make sure that all the people that are in harm's way can be well prepared. But keeping the hurricane hunters safe meant limitations until now. The idea is that we will launch these out of the P3 fly them really low into a hurricane in the areas that we don't want to put people because it's just not safe. Flying as low as 200 feet, the unmanned aircraft named Coyote will record data from areas within the storm that are yet to be discovered. Maybe we can understand that interaction between when the, the ocean is given the energy to the hurricane just a little bit better. Maybe we can get that information, get that understanding of what's going on there. And with hurricane season here, the crew is ready. It's a fantastic life. Uh, I see ourselves as guardians or protectors because what we do, we put ourselves in harm's way for the greater good. That is not stuff. for the faint yeah, of heart. Not at all. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells, very busy today. This evening, still dealing with a lot of heavy rain and strong storms. Still kind of wicked. Now, we don't mm -hmm. have any warnings except for the tropical storm warning that is still in effect. I'm waiting for the Fine folks at the Weather Service have released that, but this is what it looks like right now. You see the way the storm system is lined up. It's one of the ugliest, poorliest put together tropical storms we've had in a long, long time, but that's kind of typical for early season storms. It's located about right there, trying to get very, very close to landfall, 50 mile per hour, sustained winds still moving to the northeast at 23 miles per hour. So it's inching closer and closer to landfall. Track takes it through the northern part of the state in the next several hours. And by tomorrow morning, it's way up into Georgia. By tomorrow afternoon, 
it's gone like a fast train. Right now in Daytona Beach, still some rain on the lens. Temperature reading 75 degrees here at news time. Wind is from the south southeast at only nine miles per hour. I think within the next couple of hours, the weather service will take the tropical storm warnings off the inland areas. I don't expect we're going to have 40 mile per hour winds across much of the region, but we have had wind gusts that have been impressive. The first big line, the push, the heavy showers, the lightning and all the danger for the most part pushed on through. We still have moisture to get through, but most of these showers are not going to rock. They're not going to be as hard and heavy as the showers we've already gotten through during the day today. During the night tonight, frontal zone up north sags this way by three in the morning. Troy Bridges will be here tracking some pretty decent rain, though. I don't expect we'll have tornado warnings, but there will be more heavy showers especially from Orlando down to the south, and that will be the trend through the night tonight on through the day tomorrow as well. Future radar showing that it all clears up later. Daytime high tomorrow goes to 89 degrees, still stormy early, and then a shot of rain late. Daytime high tomorrow is 89. Daytime high on Wednesday is 92. Come Thursday, 91. In other words, after tomorrow morning, we get back to normal. All right, Tom, thank you. Hurricane Charlie left some families in the dark for weeks in 2004. But meteorologist Troy Bridges found out new technology is helping power companies get the lights back on faster. Right at about 9,000 pounds. Hurricane resistant power poles are just one way power companies are strengthening for the next storm. You know, smartphones, uh, tablets, iPads, all these things didn't exist in 2005. Florida Power and Light CEO Eric Salaji says cutting edge technology speeds up repairs. Each one of our trucks actually has an iPad on it, which also has GPS on it. So we have real time tracking. So we each know one of these represents. This is a bucket truck. We know where they're going depending on the color of the dot. He showed me one of FPL's newest tools, a custom built mobile operations center. So as soon as it's safe to actually get back in the vehicle, we're rolling. Storm is probably still going on. One truck to act as eyes. And we can zoom in uh, objects that are hundreds and hundreds of yards away. And ears. Your marine radios. Just four years ago, crews were out with clipboards getting information. Now they're using iPads to immediately find out where the hot spots and trouble spots are to get your power on much faster. We had antiquated map books. That That's lineman Richard Britt. He says a lot's changed since Wilma in 2005. Now, field workers such as myself, I get to see the entire grid in real time. So now I'm able to see exactly where the trouble location is. So this would identify that there's a tree problem. Data from those iPads can be read anywhere, including new portable field offices. These mobile offices can be dropped in place and unfolded within an hour so crews can get right to work. We can prepare earlier because we know it now, not at five or six or seven o'clock in the evening. But why wait for the storm to strike? Days before a storm ever makes landfall, we work with our meteorologist and we prepare damage estimates. John Lesson manages FPL's Power Delivery Diagnostic Center. You are sort of predicting in advance what you can do to be ready. That's correct. We also have the ability to predict what substations may be flooded. His team relies on weather forecast, engineering knowledge, and smart sensors like your power meter. Often we know about the outage before the customer would call in. The near future of disaster response could be up in the air. They're experimenting with technology like this to send drones into high places looking for damage without putting people in danger. Picture after a storm being able to send out the, the unmanned aircrafts or the drones to capture video footage. You can see where we have flooding. You can see where we have damage. We're still in the early stages on that and understanding and working with the FAA, but it has a lot of promise. Also promising? So the whole body is made out of aluminum and it floats in the water. Amphibious drones. It uses the tires to propel itself, it floats, and so it's able to get in and out of the water pretty easily on different terrains and go in the mud and swamp and muck. We can take it out into the field, look what's down, gather the equipment that needs to be replaced, have it ready, and after the flood water has died, we can be ready to go there. 
Troy, thank you. And this is a great time to download our Pinpoint Weather Hurricane app. Just search WKMG in your app store. We've also set up a comprehensive hurricane page on ClickOrlando.com, powered by News 6. You'll find lots of tips and resources to keep you and your family safe. Just click on Hurricane under the Weather tab. Orlando. I'm News 6 meteorologist Candace Campos. We are pinpointing the approach of Tropical Storm Colin that is just making its way towards the Gulf Coast. We are live here in Cedar Key, making sure to bring you all the latest updates as Colin makes its way onshore here along the Gulf Coast. Stay tuned to our News 6 pinpoint weather app as well as clickorlando.com for the very latest. And we'll be seeing you at News 6 at 11. Tom? Here you go. Take a look at what's happening right now with the storm system approaching landfall sometime in the next hour or two. The latest update has wind speeds of 50 miles per hour and the far progress at better than 23. All right, All right Tom, thank, thank you. you. And thank you for watching our special extended edition of News 6 at 7. Stay safe out there. See you at 11.